everyone, Kate from Crack of Luck is here and welcome to this new video. I know that a lot of you simply love using Jet Engine plugin as it's got so many cool features that allow you to create complex dynamic websites. And today I'd like to cover one of such features. It's pretty simple, but at the first glance can be kind of complicated. And I'm talking about user profile builder functionality. But guys, before we proceed, any further, please make sure to watch the How to Work with Profile Builder video made by Paul from WP Tuts, as he did a really great job on explaining how to import and use the build-in presets, how to customize the user account, and how to add the front-end functionality to the CPT so that users could submit their posts from the front-end. This is actually one of the most wanted topics for creating complex dynamic listing websites. And today I'd like to cover a couple of other very useful features of the user profile builder, such as how to create a public user account, how to edit the user info from the front end, and how to create users listing and put it on a separate users page. So for some of you, this might sound too complicated and for others too simple, but that's what we're going to be doing today. And also guys, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please don't hesitate to do so and like our videos so we can know that you support the things that we do. So guys, shall we get started? So, today I'm going to be working with this cool findarrow.me real estate dynamic website template that comes with all-inclusive yearly and lifetime subscription plans absolutely for free. To be sure that it's just what you need, you can view the demo of this lovely template simply by clicking right here. And as you can see, it's pretty well designed and what's more important, fully set up. So if we want to search for anything, for example, we just have to choose the exact parameters and filter the results. And if we want to search for another location, just choose it right here, filter it, and there you go, works perfectly fine. Going back to the home page, we see different listings for property types, for recent real estate and for trusted real estate agents. So what we're going to be doing today is actually creating such listing for agents as well as creating the separate page where all of the agents can be listed, like this one. And we'll be creating a single agent template so that once I click on, let's say, this Andrew, I get to see his profile with photo and info of his, as well as the contact details and properties that he is either giving for rent or selling. And guys, we'll even modify this tab a little bit together, because I think it would be nice to have properties for rent in one tab and properties for sale in another tab. So it's easier for customers, right? And what else we will do is actually let me log in into this demo. Okay, so yeah, we'll be building the settings of the user profile from scratch, adding them to this profile menu, and of course, creating this lovely form where a user or agent, so to say, can actually update his personal info from the front end if needed. So, are you ready to start? Okay, so let's close this window and start with making sure that the Profile Builder and Forms modules are enabled in the Jet Engine dashboard settings. These ones are toggled on. Good. Now, what you can do to make your life a bit easier is to go to the Skins Manager Open the Presets tab and import the Editable User Settings page for User Profile Configuration part. You can do it by clicking on the Import button. What it will do, it will actually add the User Settings subpage to the user account and import the Added User Form with default fields and notification action settings. 
I won't do it right now because I'd like to lead you through this whole process from scratch. That is why, first of all, let's go ahead and open Users section to see what their default profiles look like at the back end. So, let's add it Andrew Miller. OK. Here we have a default information of the user, like his name, role, contact info, as well as the profile picture, which can be changed on Gravatar. But I think it would be nice to have some additional, I would say advanced fields for the user's info. And to add those fields, we can use the Jet Engine Metaboxes functionality. So let's go to Jet Engine, Metaboxes, and add a new Metabox. Let's put User Info as the title. Choose the source to which this meta box will be applied to. In our case, it's user, and in the visible add option, we can choose added user and profile. Why? Because this way, the fields of this meta box will be visible at the user profile page and editable from the front end too. And do we need to add it the meta box link? No. Not really. OK, so now let's add a couple of meta fields. Let's start with the photo, for example. Yes, I know that we have the default profile picture, but I think that it would be much easier for the user to add his photo from the front end. So, label photo, name or ID the same photo, object type field, field type, Media. I don't think that we need description here and the field width, um, let's make it 25%. Conditional logic toggled off. Now, let's add another meta field for the phone number. So, label phone, name or ID the same, object type field, field type text, no description, field width 25% as well. I'll not use the character limit option, but just keep in mind that it's available right here. And also, I'm not going to put the default value, but I will make this field required. Good. No conditional logic too. OK, right now I'm adding another field for the email of the user. Label email, name or ID the same, object type field. Field type text, no description, filled with 25% and no character limit. No default value, field required, no conditional logic. Now we already have photo, phone, email fields and let's add three more. For position, about me info and social icons. So label position, name position type field, field type text, and I'll repeat the same settings here as well, so no description with 25%, no limit, no value is required, no logic, good. Two more to go, label about me, name the same object type field and field type text area, Description is not needed as it's pretty clear. Um, field width, let's make it 100%. No character limit, no default value, field not required, and no conditional logic. And the last meta field will go for the social icons. This one actually will be pretty interesting, as we'll be using repeater field type for it. So, label. Social icons, name the same, object type field, field type, repeater, good. So basically right now we will create a group of repeater fields. Let's add a new field, label icon, name icon, type icon picker. And let's add another one, label link name link, type 
text. Great! No description needed, 100% width, and no conditional logic. Okay, the meta fields are ready, so let's click on Add Meta Box. If we open Meta Boxes, we'll see that it has been added right here. We can either add it or delete it if needed. Now let's go back to the Users section to see the changes. Let's add it Andrew Miller one more time and scroll a bit down. Right here, we see a new user info section with fields for photo and phone, email and position, about me and social icons. Let's quickly fill this out and proceed to the next step. So, we are done with the user profile preparation and ready to start setting up the Profile Builder settings. Let's open Profile Builder, which is located under the Jet Engine section. As you can see, some parts of the User Profile Builder have already been preset, like the page for the user account and its subpages, My Property, Add New Property, and Added Property. These settings are directly related to the front-end post submission functionality. And just like I said in the beginning, if you need guidance with that, please feel free to check out the video made by Paul from WP Tuts. And right now, we'll pay more attention to the user's profile and start with setting up the user's page. So let's toggle user's page option on. As you can see, right here, user speech select option appears. In this drop down list, we have all the pages of our website account, home, login, and registration. So, right now, we need to create a page for the list of all users. In our case, real estate agents. That's why let's go to Pages, Add New. Let's call it Agents and edit it with Elementor. First, let's open Settings, hide the title of the page and choose Elementor Full Width for the page layout. Good. Now, let's add the heading widget and enter Trusted Real Estate Agents in the title. Align it to the center and style it a little bit. So, the text color will be gray, typography, family, Noto Sans JP, size 30, weight 700, and line height 1.25. Good. Now, let's search for the listing grid widget that will help us to pull the user data to the front end and place it underneath the heading. Just as usually, in order to display this data, we need to select the source of the listing grid, the listing item. As of now, we have nothing to search for because we didn't create it yet. So let's duplicate this tab and go to Jet Engine, Listings. As you can see here, we have a bunch of different listing items but they're all related to either posts, terms, or repeater field. And we need to create one for the users. So, let's click on Add New. In Listing Source, select Users. Let's name it List of Agents and click Create Listing Item. So, in general, I want this listing item to show such info as photo of user, his name and position, as well as the social icons of social networks he's registered on. And let's start with the photo. 
Search for the dynamic image widget and drag it onto the canvas. In the source, choose photo under the user info section. So basically this section has all the fields from the meta box user info that we've just created. Also guys, we can make this image clickable by adding a link to it. But we'll do it a bit later once we create our single agent page template. As of now, let's just keep in mind that we'll have to return to this point, okay? So now let's add a heading widget for the name of the user. In our case, we need it to be dynamic. That is why let's add dynamic tags functionality to it. So let's click on dynamic tags, choose user field under the jet engine section and pick display name field from user properties. And as for the context, current user for current scope will work perfectly fine for us in this case. And we surely can link the name to the profile page template, but we'll have to do it after we create one. So here's another thing to keep in mind for the future. As of now, we can add a dynamic tag, choose profile page URL under the jet engine section, and later we'll select the single agent page from this list. Okay, now we need another heading widget for position of the user. We'll use dynamic text functionality for that as well. So let's choose user field and pick position field under the user info section. Context will say the same current user for current scope. And the last thing for this listing item is what? Yep, social icons. If you remember, social icons field type was repeater. That is why let's search for the dynamic repeater widget that will help us to pull the data from the backend and place it right at the bottom. Then choose social icons meta field in the source. Good. But as you can see, it displays the info in, I would say, not really comprehensive manner, right? That is why we need to change the items format. A little bit of HTML will help us in this case and will not only apply the icon image to the item, but also make it clickable too. So let's add an anchor element with hyperlink because we did specify one in the repeater field. And also let's add the icon class too. Just in case, guys, this is the repeater field name, the same one as here, okay? And let's style these icons so they look nice and fit the design. So in general, let's set the typography size to 14 and change the weight to 400. Line height, let's set it to 1. And color, let's change it to the light gray and also set margins from right and left. 10 pixels there and 10 pixels here would be fine. Good. So our listing item is ready, let's save the changes and go back to the agents page. And I'm not closing this one on purpose because we'll still have to edit it once we create a single agent template, remember? So let's search for the list of agents. Great, now we can see the info. But currently this listing grid shows all the users, admins and real estate agents and I want it to display only the agents. That is why we need to query it a little bit. Let's open users query, cause we're querying users, right? Not posts or terms. And in the roles field, specify one of the roles, author in particular. So this way it will show only the users with the role author. You can add more roles if we wish so, but I will stick to this one. 
Ok guys, let's save the changes and go back to the profile builder. So now we can select the page we just created from the list. Great! The next thing we want to do is enable single user page option. Because we do want each agent to have their personal public page. Once enabled, we get to see a couple of new options like single user page with the select dropdown, user page rewrite and user page tab right here. So single user page option allows us to select the page that will be used as the base for the single agent template that we'll create in a few minutes. So here we can select agents page as well. This way we'll have a pretty nice looking URL structure. Then the user page rewrite option gives us the opportunity to choose the way we want our single user page slug to be rewritten as a username, as user nickname or as user ID. I'll choose user nickname. And the user page tab allows us to create a sub page for user account menu, customize its settings and apply a public single page template to it. So first let's give a name to our sub page, single agent. The slug is generated automatically. Good. And template. We didn't create a template yet. So you know what we're going to be doing right now. Let's follow to templates, saved templates and click on add new. Select the type of template page, give it a name. So it will be single agent and click on create template. Let's go to settings first and change the page layout to Elementor full width. OK, and now we can start building the public user page that we'd like to see on our website. I'll start with adding a two column section for the information about the user or agent to be more precise. In the first column, I'll place inner section widget and in the very left column, I'll add a dynamic image widget. In the source of the widget, I'll choose photo under the user info section. Now let me change the size of the columns a little bit. Good. So in the right hand column of this block, I'd like to put the info like name of the agent, his position and about me info. So let's start with the name first. Search for the dynamic field widget and drop it onto the canvas. In the source, we'll keep post term user object data, but in the object field, we'll choose display name under the user section. In the style tab, I'll choose the text color from global colors presets. And as for typography, the text family is Noto Sans GP, size 24 pixels, weight 700, and line height 1.25. And one little thing, let's change the margin of this widget a little bit in the advanced settings. So I'll put four at the bottom. OK, now let's go for the heading widget and drop it under the name of the agent. Here we'll use the dynamic text functionality, just like in the list of agents listing item. So let's choose the user field under the jet engine section and in the field drop down, select the position field. The context stays the same. And in the style tab, I'll apply the preset text color and typography for position. And in the advanced settings, I'll change the margin to 28 pixels. Yeah, 28 pixels at the bottom. Good. Now let's duplicate this heading widget and change the field in the dynamic text settings. Let's change it to about me. Great. And change the margin to let's say 15. No, let's make it 18 pixels at the bottom. And also I'd like to add a little final styling drop in this inner section widget. Let's open the style tab and in the border add drop shadow. 
let's make it almost invisible. Yeah, like this one. And move it a bit down. So I guess three pixels would be fine. Great. Now let's go for the second column. Here on the right side, I want to place the contact info of the current user. We can do it by using dynamic tags or dynamic widgets functionality. Or we can create a separate listing item for contact info to have a possibility using it not only on the single user page, but also on the single property page or anywhere else, for example. So that's what we're going to do right now. Let's open WordPress dashboard in the new tab and go to Jet Engine Listings. Click on Add New. In the listing source, choose Users. Give it a name like Shorter Agent Info and click Create. Let's add a new section and first of all, go to the listing settings to change the preview width to 400 or maybe, maybe 370 pixels. Yeah, good. Now let's select the column and change the background color to dark blue. And while we're editing this column, let's change the padding too. So let's make it 40, 30, 50 and 30. Good. So let's start with adding a heading widget to the column and changing its title to contact info, color white, typography Noto Sans JP, size 20 pixels, weight 500, line height 2.25, and widgets margin 13 at the bottom. Good. Let's add another heading for the phone label. So color light gray, typography, I'll choose position preset and I guess I'll change the line height to 1.75, which is margin 5 at the right and positioning in line auto. Right now, to save the time, let's duplicate this widget and change the title to email, good. So the labels are ready and now we can search for the dynamic link widget and place it in between these two. In the source, let's choose phone under the user info section. Replace the read more with field value macros and go to the style tab. I'll choose this preset for typography and change the line height to 1.33. The text color will be yellow on normal, white on hover, and positioning in line auto. Now, I don't want all of them to be in the same line, so I'll place a spacer between them and set it to 5 pixels. I think it will be enough. Let's duplicate the dynamic link widget, move it under the email heading widget, Change the source to email and in the style tab, swap the colors. So white on normal, yellow on hover. Okay. I also want to place the social icons here too. So let's duplicate the contact info heading, drag it to the bottom, change the title to connect with us. Adjust the text size to 16 pixels and change the margin, because right now it sticks to the upper widgets too much. So at the top, let's set it to 20 or maybe even 25 pixels. And at the bottom to 15. No, let's make it 17. Yeah, that's better. Okay, and the last widget in the listing item would be the dynamic repeater. We can actually copy it from the list of agents listing item, this one, to speed up the process. And adjust the margin of items in the style tab. So let's make it 19 here. Okay, let's save the changes and go back to our single agent template. Now we can search for the listing grid widget and drop it into the right column. 
In the listing, type in the shorter agent info. Doesn't look that nice, right? So let's set the columns number to 1, posts number to 1 as well. Good, looks much better now. Ok, and as I promised, let's add a new section for the Crocoblock tabs widget. We're gonna create two tabs, one for the properties for rent and another one for the properties for sale. So let's search for the tabs widget, place it into the bottom section, remove the third tab and firstly style them a little bit. Go to tabs control item and change the color to grey. For typography, I'll use the position preset and change the transform option to uppercase, as well as the line height to 1.43 and weight to 700. Let's also change the text color on hover and on active to green, add border type solid on active, change the width to 2 pixels at the bottom so it would just underline the active tab and change the color to green too. And also, I think it would be nice to add a little bit of padding and margin too. So, padding. Let's make it 6 from top and bottom and 9 from right and left. And as for the margin, I guess 10 pixels on the right would be just fine. Great! Guys, I'm not styling the icons here because I'm not going to use them in this design. So let's return to the content tab and start customizing the tabs. So first tab, we'll make it active, remove the icon and change the label to for rent. In the content type, we'll leave template and right now we need to choose the template that we'd like to use for this tab. And as you might have guessed, we don't have one created yet. So let's open the WordPress dashboard in the new tab and follow to templates, saved templates, click on add new, select the type of the template page and give it a name for rent and click create. Ok guys, this template will be pretty simple. We just need to add the listing grid widget here and choose the most suitable listing item for it. I already have the listing item for the properties created. Let me show you what it looks like. Let's go to Jet Engine, Listings and open Listing Properties in line. So as you can see, here we have the featured image of the property on the left side dynamic terms widget for the purpose taxonomy, dynamic field with the address metadata, dynamic link for the title of the post and its permalink, and another dynamic field for the post excerpt. Icon list for the number of rooms, baths and square meters, and dynamic field for the price with the heading widget for the period info. So, we'll be using this listing item in our properties template. In the listing, let's type in listing properties in line, change the columns number to 1 and post number to, let's make it 5, good. We're gonna query the posts by author and terms. So first let's open the posts query and select posts and author parameters. In the posts by section, select the option queried user, so it would show the properties of a particular author. Now let's add another item for the tax query. Choose the taxonomy purpose. In the field dropdown, select the option slug and type the name of the exact taxonomy we need. For example, rent. Save the changes and create completely the same template but for sale. So let's click on add new, page, for sale, create. I've copied the listing grid widget and inserted it here to save the time. 
And now what we need to do is simply change the taxonomy name to sale. Good. And save the changes. Now our templates are ready and we can go back to the single agent template and apply them in the tabs settings. Choose the template for rent and open the second tab. Remove the icon, change the label to for sale and choose the template for sale. Guys, please don't worry that you don't see any info here yet. That's because currently it shows the admin user info and this particular user has not submitted any properties yet. So there are simply no posts to show. But once we open this template on the front end as per the agent, it will show the posts this agent has created. Okay? So our single agent page template is finally ready and we can now apply it to our single agent user page in the profile builder settings. Good. Now moving on to the next options, hide from menu. It literally hides the single agent subpage from the account menu, but keeps it accessible by the URL and will enable this option. Page visibility, I'll set it to all because this is the public profile of the agent. And show this page for user role actually allows you to show it only to queried user roles. Okay, as we already created and customized a public profile page of the user, now we can finish setting up the list of agents listing item. Remember that we had to return to this point after the single agent template was created. So let's link this image to the profile page as well as the name of the agent too. In the link source, choose profile page and in the profile page, select single agent. Let's do the same thing for the name of the user. We've already applied the dynamic tags functionality to the title and in the link field, we've chosen profile URL. So here we just have to choose the profile page, single agent two. Good. Now we can save the changes. What else I'd like to do before proceeding with the profile builder settings. First, I'd like to add agents page to the website menu to have access to this page. And second, I'd like to add trusted real estate agents listing to the home page, just like in the demo. And also add a button with a direct link to the agents page as well. So let's go to appearance, menus, and add the agents page to the menu. Save the changes and check if it works. Okay. So let's go to the front end, click on agents, and we are now at the page we created for the list of agents. What else we can do now is actually check if our listing is clickable as it should be. So if I click on the photo of Andrew, I get to see his profile with the info and his properties for rent and for sale. Let's go back and check another user. Mary Scott, for example. Here you go. Here's her profile with corresponding info and properties of hers. So the menu and listings work just fine. Now let's open the home page and edit it with Elementor. Now let's scroll way down and add a new section underneath the properties. First, let's drop a heading widget here and change the title to Trusted Real Estate Agents. In the Style tab, change the color to Dark Gray and in the Typography, I'll choose the Heading Preset. Ok, good. Now let's open Advanced Settings. Go to Positioning and change the width to inline auto and align it to the center. Good. 
Now let's search for the Listing Grid widget and place it underneath the heading. Choose the source of the grid List of Agents. Change the columns number to 4 and the posts number to 4 as well. And query the users by role author. Good. And we also wanted to add the button here, right? So let's search for the button widget and place it in between the heading and listing grid widgets. Type will stay default. Text will be join our agents. Link. Let's type in agents. There it is. Now let's add an arrow SVG icon after the text and change the icon spacing to 10. OK. In the Style tab, I'll change the typography to Position Preset and set the weight to 700 and transform to uppercase. Text color I'll make dark blue on Normal and green on Hover and remove the background color. Change the padding to 0 and open Advanced Settings to set the position to Inline Auto and align it to the center. To make these two stick to the sides, we need to adjust the column settings. So Horizontal Align, let's set it to Space Between. Good. And I just recalled one thing. Let's add it this listing item just a little bit. Open the Navigator to select the column and adjust the widget space to 10 pixels. OK, good, that's better. And now let's return to the home page and save the changes. Let's go back to the Profile Builder settings to see what options we didn't go through yet. Right here we have the template mode. You know, guys, it turns out that this feature is very popular with the requests to our support team. A lot of questions have been asked about it already, but it's actually pretty simple. So it's got two options, rewrite and content. Basically, they define how the subpage templates will be processed. And I'm talking about not just single user page template, but other ones as well. So, for example, if we select the Rewrite option, our single agent template will rewrite the content that exists on the Agents page, because previously we've selected Agents page as the base for the single user public profile. We did it for the URL structuring purposes. Let's open the front end to see what I mean. Click on Agents. Good. So currently we are at the list of agents page and the URL looks like this. If I want to take a look at the public profile of the user, I'll have to click on let's use Andrew one more time. And this way the profile builder module will automatically apply the single agent template to the agents page, thus rewriting its content the heading with the title and the listing grid of agents. As you can see, once we are on a single public page, the URL now looks like this. So this is the rewrite mode, and it's actually a great option to use if you have a customized user profile template. Let's go back to the settings. If we select Content option, then it will just show the content of the page that you've selected as the base. You see, the URL changed, but the info stayed the same. So in our case, we need to use the Rewrite option. Here we have a Use Page Content option that will apply the page content if the subpage template is not selected. OK, next one, Hide Admin Bar. Well, this one is pretty clear, right? It will hide the admin bar for non-admin users. I'll toggle it on. And the last option gives us the opportunity to restrict admin area access for specific roles. OK, so let's save the changes and proceed with the last thing for today, 
creating the user settings subpage, building added user form, and customizing added user template. These three options are directly connected with the front-end form submission, so the process of setting it up will be familiar to you if you have watched the video made by Paul. So let's go to the Account page tab and add a new subpage. I'll call it Settings, Slug Settings, and now we need to apply a template to it. Right now we're going to go to Templates, Saved Templates, and add a new template. Select the type of the template, Page, and name it Added User. Let's start with adding a two-column section. Good. Now let's search for the Profile menu widget and place it into the left column. In the context, we'll keep Account subpage and switch the menu layout to Vertical. As for the style, let's set the item width to 100%, choose the typography preset Name Listings, and change the weight to 400 and line height to 1.5. The text color will be dark gray on normal, green on hover, and dark gray on active. But here we'll also add the background color, pale green. Let's also change the padding here to 18 at the top and bottom and 40 at right and left. Good. Now let's place the button widget underneath the menu. We'll use this button to sign out of the account. So, type default text sign out link. We can actually copy it from the auth links widget. OK. Good. Let's set the size medium and open the style tab. Change typography to name listings preset. Adjust the weight to 400. Remove the background color and set the text color to gray on normal and green on hover. Set the padding here to zero and go to the advanced tab to adjust the padding to 20 at the top and 40 on the left. Good. And the most interesting part will go to the right column. First, let's drop a heading widget here and change the title to added profile. Choose the text color gray and typography heading preset. In advanced settings, change margin to 30 at the bottom. Good. And now let's search for the form widget and place it underneath the heading. Here, we need to select the form that we'd like to use in this template. But we don't have it created yet. So let's go back to WordPress dashboard Go to Jet Engine, Forms, and click on Add New. Add the title, Edit User, and start building the form itself. We're going to have a pretty good amount of fields in this form. Not as many as in the property submission, of course, but still there will be quite a few. So, we already have the hidden field for the post ID, which works perfectly fine for us, and the submit field that we'll surely need. But as of now, I'll remove it from the form because I don't want to drag it around all the time while adding new fields, okay? So, let's delete it for now and add the first, well, technically the second field. This one will go for the heading. Set the label photo no description needed, and field visibility for all. Apply the changes, good. Let's add another one. Choose the type media, name profile photo, label photo, no description, field required, user access any registered user, Let's mark Insert Attachment and choose the field value Attachment ID. Good. Here I'll set one for the maximum files to upload and one megabyte for the size of the file. And over here 
we can select the type of the files that we'd like to see in our media library. So I'll go for the GPack, GIF, and PNG. And I'll leave the field visibility for all. OK, apply the changes. Next one. Let's add the group break first. Good. And go for another heading field. Set the label basic information and leave it visible for all. Now I'll add the text field for the name of the user. So field type text, name, first name, label, your name, no description, field required, no input mask, placeholder name, no default value, and I'll not limit the length and leave it visible for all. OK. Let's make this one half of the size and add another field. Make it in line with the previous one and choose the field type text again, name, last name, label, your surname, no description, mark it required, no input mask, placeholder, surname, and leave it visible for all. OK, the next field will go for the About Me info. So I'll choose the type Text Area, Name About Me, Label Tell About Yourself. Let's untick the required option and leave it visible for all. OK, now let's add another group break field. Good. And now let's add a new heading field and set the label contacts and apply the changes. Good. And I'll add another two fields, one for the email and another one for the phone. I'll make it half of the size as well and inline them with each other. So let's add it the email, type text, field type email, name email, label your email, field required and placeholder email as well. Good. And now let's add it the phone. So type text, field type telephone, name phone, label phone, field required, placeholder phone, and let's apply the changes. Good. So we already have a couple of fields created. And what are we going to do now? Yep, guys, we're going to add another group break field, OK? Now let's add new heading for these settings. So the type heading, label settings, visible for all. And now I'm adding two more fields for the passwords. So I'm changing the size right now. Good. The first one will go for the new password. So the type text, field type password, name new password, label new password, Field required and placeholder password. Now let's add the other one. Type text, field type password, name confirm password, label confirm password, field required and placeholder password again. Great. And finally, we can add the submit button. And I'll change the label here to update info. Great. Now let's scroll a bit down and enable preset form field values and choose the source user. Get user ID from current user and map the fields. So we could update the info from these fields later on. OK, so post ID will be user ID. Profile photo, let's choose user meta and enter photo. First name will go for the first name, last name for last name. About me, choose user meta and enter about me meta field name. Email will go for email, phone. Again, user meta, phone. New password will go for password and confirm password for confirm password. Now we're done with building the form, but we still have to set up the post submit actions slash notification settings, right? 
So let's change this one to update user and map the form fields so it would save the info from the form properly. So in the post ID, we'll set user ID will update this user. Profile photo, we'll choose user meta and set the corresponding meta field name, which is photo. First name will go for the first name, last name for the last name. About me, one more time, choose user meta and enter the meta field name about me. Email will go for email, phone, user meta, phone. New password will go for password, confirm password for confirm password. Okay, now we can apply the changes and save the form. Let's go back to Elementor, select form widget and choose added user form from the list. Great. Let's set the form submit type to Ajax and go to the style settings to make it look a bit nicer. So let's start with the rows. Set columns gap to 20. Typography, I'll choose the position preset and change the line height to 1.75. Text color will be dark gray. Gap, 4 pixels at the bottom. Okay, let's move on to the fields tab. Typography, again position preset. Change the size to 12 pixels and line height to 1.5. Color gray, placeholder gray. Background white. Padding, let's make it 10, 20, 10, 20. Border type solid and width 1 pixel. Color pale gray. We don't have checkbox calculated and range fields in the form, so let's move on to the heading tab. Typography, I'll choose name listings preset and change the size to 20 pixels. Color will be dark gray. Gap, 5 pixels at the bottom. OK. We also don't have the repeater field in the form, so let's go straight to the groups break tab. Set the height to 1 pixel and change the color to pale gray as well. Gap before 40 and gap after 30. Good. Required mark will stay with default styling and submit button. Background color will be green on normal and yellow on hover. Text color over here will be blue and here on normal will be white. Typography, I'll choose position preset and change the line height to 1.75. Padding, let's make it 18, 40, 18 and 40 and margin 40 at the top. Okay, so we don't have the next or previous buttons in the form, so let's open the last tab and adjust the notification messages styling. Typography position, line height 175. Border type solid with zero. Text color on success green and on error red. Padding zero. And guys, we are done. Let's save the changes and go back to the profile builder settings to apply this template to our settings subpage. Okay, edit user. Great. Now we can save the changes and proceed to the front end. First of all, to see how this page looks like and to change some info of the user from the front end. So let's change the photo. Good. Name. Let's make it Nicole, for example. Surname Rodriguez. About me. I guess I'll leave it just as it is and change the phone number, for example, to. OK, let's enter the password, confirm it, and update the info. Great, the info has been successfully updated. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was useful and informative for you and your projects. If you still have any questions, please don't hesitate to write them right in the comments below this video or contact our support team so they could assist you. Share your wonderful ideas with us on our GitHub page and join our friendly Facebook community. Cheers, guys!